This video will talk about solving quadratic equations and inequalities. There are four ways that we know how to do these, and the first way is to do it graphically. We can find the zeros, which is the solutions to the quadratic set equal to zero, which are actually just the x-intercepts when we look on the graph. They want us to find it graphically, but let's talk about factoring real quick. So if I had this problem, I would want to rewrite it as x squared minus 3x minus 18 equal to 0. And then I would take x and x and factors of 18 that would add up to 3 or subtract a 3 since they're going to be opposite signs here. This negative 18 would be a negative 6 and a positive 3. And then you could set those equal to 0. x minus 6 equals 0. So x equal positive 6 and x plus 3 equals 0. So x equal negative 3. Now let's see if we get the same values. It's a negative 3. If we graph, if we want to find the x-intercepts or the zeros, we need to use this equation right here in our calculator. Put in x squared minus 3x minus 18. And then we want a standard window because this is a simple graph. We're hoping it's going to be between 6 and negative 3, which works. We need to do second trace. And we just want to find the zeros, so hit 2 and it's going to ask us for a left bound so we're going to go find this point here so we want to go to the left which is actually up here the leftmost point that we see here and we want a left arrow until we can get to where oops there it was so here we are we could press enter there that's close enough and then we want to go across the x-axis to get the right bound press enter enter for the guess and there's our negative three so we found that one if we want to find the other one, again, we can do second trace uh, 2 for a 0. But I want to show you another way that you could find the zeros. It takes two equations, but you would put in 0 here, y2 equals 0, because that's the x-axis. And then all you have to do is second trace 5, and you would do the intersection. I want to get to that point over there, so I'm going to just go on my second equation because it's a straight line. And I just have to make sure I'm on the other side of the vertex, but there I am. So press enter, and then up here it says y1, yep, that's my other equation, enter, enter for the guess, and there we find x is equal to 6. So if we had drawn our graph, we would have had it at negative 3 and 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, and our graph looked something like this, and that would be our graph solution. Square root property is another way that we can solve it. So you have x squared or something squared is going to be equal to a constant. So if that's true, that means that x is equal to the square root of k, or it could also be the opposite of square root of k. For example, before we do our problems, if I take 2 and I square that, I get that 4. But if I take negative 2 and I square that, I also get 4. So that's why you have to have the positive and the negative. Now, if you remember, we talked about the fact that it was something squared. So what we're really doing here is taking the square root of both sides. This something squared is literally a something squared. It's a binomial squared. But a square root and a square cancel each other out. They're opposite functions. So that just leaves us with p plus 5. And then we have plus or minus the square root of 49, which will be plus or minus 7. And then we just subtract the 5 from both sides but we're going to have 7 minus 5 and negative 7 minus 5. So p is going to be equal to 7 minus 5 is 2, or p will be negative 7 minus negative 5, which is negative 12. We have both of those answers. In this case, I do have just something that looks like x squared, but I have to take the constant to the other side. It has to be the something squared equal to a constant. So we want to take the square root of both sides as plus or minus this side. So square cancels the square root. So we have m equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. And I'm good with that. That's what we call an exact answer because we haven't rounded it if we try to take the square root. And I'm, you don't have to simplify it any further. All right, so let's fill in the blank to make a perfect trinomial square. A perfect trinomial square is a perfect square. And the last term is also a perfect square. But when I take 2 times the product of that, I should get 2 thirds. Well, what does that really mean? Well, let's think about it this way. If I take 1 third and I double that, I'm going to get 2 thirds. And if I unsquare p, I'll get p. So 2 times 1 third 
times p is equal to 2 thirds p. But this last term has to be a perfect square, so it's actually going to be p squared plus 2 thirds p plus 1 ninth. And then it says factor it as a binomial squared. Well, binomial squared, you unsquare this term to get your p, because it would be p times p. That's how you get your p squared. It's a plus in the middle here, so we have a plus. And you unsquare this. The square root of 1 ninth is equal to 1 third. And so we have 1 third here, because we'd have plus 1 third plus 1 third p squared. 1 third p plus 1 third p will give us our 2 thirds p, and 1 third times 1 third is our 1 ninth. So we have p plus 1 third quantity squared. So we want to complete the square here. So we're doing the same thing. We have p squared plus 6p, and we want to add something like we did up here to make a perfect trinomial square. But if I add it to one side, I have to add it to the other side as well. Well, the really the trick here is to think of if I had taken 2 thirds up here and multiplied it by 1 half or taken 1 half of it, the 2's would have canceled and I would have had 1 third. So this number that I have to square for the last term is half the middle, okay? Or b over 2. My b is 6, and I divide that by 2, and that gives me 3, but I have to square that 3, okay? This 1 third quantity squared was b over 2 quantity squared. So 6 over 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so it's p squared plus 6p plus 9 is equal to, I have to add 9 to both sides, so negative 4 plus 9 will be 5 equal to, and I want to have this binomial squared here. Remember you unsquare the first term, that's p, and unsquare the last term, that's 3 or half of this middle term will also be what you're going to add. It's a positive here, so I want a positive here. And now I'm ready to solve. So now I have a perfect square equal to a number, just like we had before. So I take my square root of p plus 3 quantity squared, and the square and the square root cancel each other out, p plus 3. And I have plus or minus the square root of 5 which is simply plus or minus the square root of 5. I can't go any further with that. It's not a perfect square. And if I subtract the 3 from both sides, I have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. And the last way to do it is to use the quadratic formula. Well, the quadratic formula is going to be this negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I am not going to make you do that by hand. And if we call up the calculator, we have this program down here. Now you may not have it, hopefully you've gotten it from me at this point, but if you have it, next class period we will. You have the program and I, it should say quad 84 and it may not work, yours may not work exactly like mine, but they all give you the same answer. Before I can do the quadratic formula here, I have to make this equal to 0. 3n squared minus 7n minus 6 equal to 0 and this is what I will put in my calculator for the quadratic formula. And a here is the coefficient on n squared, so 3. b is the coefficient on n, so negative 7. And c is the constant, or negative 6. Again, using my calculator, I just choose program, and then I press enter because I want quad 84. It says program quad 84. Yep, that's what I want, so another enter. And then I enter my a, which was 3, enter, b, which was negative 7, enter, c, which is negative 6, and enter. And I find out that x is equal to 3, and negative, this is 2 thirds. So x is equal to 3 and negative 2 thirds.